Do you wish to make a top-down 2D game but you're struggling with implementing bullets or you're having performance issues? Well, I made this very powerful and easy to use plugin called Blast Bullets 2D. Let's first take a look at some of the features that it supports. Movement properties, speed, max speed, acceleration, rotation control, rotation speed, max rotation speed, rotation acceleration. Bullet animation, done by swapping textures over a specific amount of time. Control over texture size and collision shape size. Control over collision shape position. Bullet lifetime control. Support for custom bullet data, like armor damage, magic damage, bullet type, or anything else you could think of. Support for shaders and instance shader uniform values. Now, some of the more impressive ones. Automatic object pooling. When a bullet hits an enemy target, it gets disabled instead of freed. This removes the need of always having to allocate memory over and over for new instances. Instead, disabled bullets get reused. You also have helper functions that allow you to populate the object pool as well as free it when it's no longer needed. Physics interpolation. Bullets will always appear smooth when this option is enabled, regardless of the device's physics tick rate or refresh rate. This is perfect for monitors above 60 Hz. And let's finish with this big one, saving and loading of bullets state. What this means is that at any point in your game, the user can save the state of all currently active bullets. This data can be added to a save file and the user would be able to restore the state of all bullets. Of course, Blast Bullet Studio supports many more features, so check them out on the official GitHub repository. Oh, and also, the plugin is completely free and open source forever. By hearing all of this, you might think, hey, this sounds great and all, but I don't get how all of this would boost my game's performance. Well, sure, the object pooling might help and all other features would save a lot of development time. But what is the secret here? What is the big deal? Well, my friend, to be honest, I found a very nice trick that you can use whenever you're not satisfied with Godot's performance. One of the biggest bottlenecks is the programming language that Godot uses, GDScript. It's made super simple and you don't really have to worry about many things that happen behind the scenes. But this is at the cost of performance. This is why many people choose to use C Sharp instead. But the Godot team still has some work to do to make it a superior alternative. So. What exactly did I do? I just used C++. C++? I know, that might be quite the jump scare for the average person. But do not worry, I repeat, do not worry. Blast Bullets 2D might be written in C++, but all of the functions and properties are meant to be used inside the Godot editor just like you have always done until now. I mean, the engine itself is written in C++ as well, so all I did was write a dynamic library that integrates with the engine and exposes the functionality I want you to use and play around with. I promise you, you don't need to touch any C++. All you have to do is download and load the plugin inside your Godot project. The rest is up to you by using the functions my plugin provides. And, just to make it even easier, I've provided documentation in the editor for every function and property. Very nice, I know. I achieved all of this using GD extension, which is the newest, most modern way of writing C++ code for the Godot engine. Currently, there aren't a lot of tutorials and documentation online, but I'll surely make some if there are enough people interested in that. So. Leave a comment if you want me to do that. Now, back to the topic. The only reason you might want to edit the C++ code is if you want to compile it for a specific operating system or make code changes, improvements or fixes. Let's get to the reasons why you might not want to use my plugin, because this is also important. As of the date I'm making this video, white sorting is not supported, only Z indexing is supported. Only Rectangle Shape 2D is supported as a collision shape. Only Area 2D like behavior. All bullets act as Area 2D, they are not Rigid Body 2D and don't support bouncing off of other bullets and so on. Basically, you cannot apply impulse forces, just view them as Area 2D bullets. 
And let me just mention that the plugin comes pre compiled for only these systems Windows, Android, Linux, and Web. Yes, as you noticed, Mac OS and iOS are missing, which means you need to go and read the compile instructions in the GitHub repository if you're targeting those devices and search online for more documentation. All right, now that you guys finally got through all of my yapping, I can finally show you how to install Plus Bullet Studio in your Godot project. There are two ways, so let's start with the easier one. You open up a brand new Godot project and you go to the Asset Library tab and search for Blast Bullets 2D. And then install it. Now just refresh your Godot project and you're ready to use it. Very simple. The second way. Currently, the Godot team is working on a brand new asset store, so just in case in the future if my plugin is not yet visible there, you should do this. Go inside my GitHub repository and download the latest version. The first zip is the actual plugin. Just go to your file explorer and inside the rest folder extract the zip. Refresh your Godot project just in case and you're done. Here I should mention that the second zip that you saw in the GitHub releases is the actual test project that compares the performance between Blast Bullets 2D bullets and Godot Area 2D bullets. It also tests all functionality and could be a lot of fun for you. So you can go ahead and download that if you want to play around with it and see how much more optimized my plugin is. How to use the plugin. When making the API, I've ensured that even a total beginner would be able to use my plugin. The only node that you're interested in is the Bullet Factory 2D. This node makes it possible to spawn bullets with different properties and manage plugin related options, like collisions debugger, physics interpolations, and so on. So, let's go ahead and add a brand new Bullet Factory 2D node to the scene tree. As you can see from the custom documentation I've written, this is truly the heart of my plugin. You can always open up the editor's documentation tab and search for functions and properties you're interested in. You can also even search for other classes. Being able to look for and understand documentation is a very important skill, so if you've never done that, make sure you get familiar with it since you might be interested in some of the other classes that my plugin provides. Anyways. Now that we have a Bullet Factory 2D node inside our scene tree, all we have to do is get a reference of the node inside a script and we'll be ready to use its functions and properties. But usually when making a game, bullets can be spawned by other entities, not only the player. So my advice is to create a brand new script that holds all global variables. This includes the reference of our Bullet Factory 2D node. This will make it possible for every single script in your game to access all those variables in your global script. How can we do that? Create a brand new script and name it globals.gd. Make it into a class by using class name. Me personally, I'll name the class globals as well. Now that we have a class globals, let's make a variable that will hold our Bullet Factory 2D. The variable should have the static keyword, which will make it directly accessible from the class name, and you won't need an instance of the class. We should also use type hinting since it will make it possible for Godot to show us all the functions and properties that the type provides. If this sounds complex, you can just think of it like so. There exists only a single instance of our Bullet Factory 2D, and we want to be able to access it from everywhere. That's why it's static. You can add more static variables inside our Globals class that could hold things like 
player inventory or player UI reference. And it will be possible for those things to also be accessed by any other Godot script, just like our Bullet Factory 2D. Anyways, right now, the static variable we made holds nothing, so it's equal to null. Well, we already added a Bullet Factory 2D node to our scene tree, so let's set the static variable to be equal to that, so that it holds the reference. Create a node and then move the Bullet Factory 2D inside of it as a child. Attach a brand new script to the newly created node. Implement the ready function. Inside the code block of the ready function, we need to access the globals class and the static variable we just made. So type globals.bulletfactory equals to, and let's set it to the bullet factory 2D node that we've added to the scene tree. We are done and we can access the node through the static variable in any script we desire. Also note that when you're playing around with the Bullet Factory 2D, you are free to also attach a brand new script to it as well to handle the various signals that it has for collisions. But never implement the ready function inside there or your game will crash. We go in a new script where we want to spawn bullets and we type globals.bulletfactory and then we have two options. We can either spawn the directional bullets or block bullets. The difference is the following. Block bullets are super simple. This is just a block of bullets that moves in a single direction. Directional bullets are when you want each bullet to have its own direction. Also, as you can see from the spawn functions, they expect resource data and that data has several mandatory properties. So make sure to set that up properly or you will experience crashes. Read the in-editor documentation carefully and happy coding. If you want me to make a more in-depth tutorial on how to make an actual game step by step, then please leave a comment. Also, if you want to support me in making more cool, free and open source plugins as well as tutorials, here is my Patreon. That's all, thanks for watching, I'll hopefully see you in the next one.